Welcome to Cooking Right. I'm John Ash, and on today's show, I've taken some recipes out of this book that I did, uh, oh, three or four years ago called American Game Cooking. And it was interesting. It was a great, it was a fun book for me to do with my compatriot, Sid Goldstein, and I did this. And I think what drove us to do it, Sid was coming from a kind of different viewpoint than I, but what I was interested in with uh, game meats generally, and these were not so much the things shot in the wild, but those that were farm-raised, were that these kinds of meats are sort of the last bastion, if you will, of unmanipulated meat, if that makes any sense. That is that, you know, they haven't been highly inbred at this point, and generally they're not raised with a lot of growth hormones or antibiotics or any of those kinds of things. And so I think it fits with the idea of the theme of this show, which is cooking right, Anyway, today's show is about one of those uh, things that we included in that book, and that is quail. And little quail are, we have some of them here. Let me come over and, and sort of show you these. Quail are really uh, pretty generally available. Um, the, we have some here. Um, they are, you know, it's the kind of thing that you don't always see them in the marketplace. They're farm-raised in a number of locations around the country. You don't always see them in the, in the marketplace. But, you know, all you have to do is ask for them. It is a chicken or egg, or if you will, a quail or egg sort of situation that we don't uh, uh, always see them in the market because no one asks for them, and then markets don't carry them because people don't ask for them, and so I don't know which comes first. But ask for them because they are, they are widely available. And here, here's how they come. Uh, we have quail of two different sizes. There are really two breeds that are used uh, in quail that are commercially farmed. One is called, and you don't have to remember any of this stuff, but one are Bob White quail, which are a little larger like this guy, and the other are Caternix quail, which are a little smaller like this guy. I tend to prefer the larger ones just because there's a little more meat on the bones. And one of the things that I want to point out to you is anytime you're eating quail, I can't tell you, it drives me out of my mind, both in the restaurant as well as other places, is you'll see people when they order a quail dish, take a knife and fork, and delicately try to cut the meat off the bone, you know, off these little legs or something. When you eat quail, the only way to eat them is to pick them up and, and bite it right off the bone because that way you can suck all those wonderful juices off and all that kind of stuff. So you must never, never, never use a knife and a fork with quail. All right, these are, these are some of these. What we have here also are uh, one of the things which are quite wonderful, and that is quail eggs. And quail eggs are used in a lot of different dishes, especially used in uh, the cuisines of the Orient, in which they'll either just drop a little poached egg in or hard boil these and put them as a little decoration. Anyway, they're really fun, too. All right, the first dish that we're going to do today, and I've already started this, is a quail marinated uh, in, uh, in just some onion and sherry wine vinegar, which we're going to marinate for just an hour or two. And then we're going to serve this with a yogurt, grapefruit, vinaigrette, and then garnish the plate. This is really a kind of salad slash main course in which we're going to put the warm quail on a base of greens, some fresh citrus fruit, and this little yogurt, grapefruit, vinaigrette. Okay, it begins with, and I've already done some here, I've sauteed some onions and added some sherry vinegar to it. We have some here. Let that reduce a little bit in the pan and throw it in a bowl, let it cool. To that, I'm going to add some chopped um, mint, which I put in here, a little bit of chopped uh, or of ground um, clove, and some white peppercorns, which we can either, which you'd want to crush just a little bit, a little bit of olive oil. And all you do with this is put the quail in, and this is, this is not one of those that uh, you have to marinate for a long time, but what you want to do in there is just put it in and rub this stuff all over it. These, by the way, are quail that Often you can buy them in the market this way. They're already boned, and they have this little wire in them which keeps them even, uh, which keeps them flat or relatively uniformly flat so that they don't, uh, 
so that when you're grilling them or broiling them, it just they just take two or three minutes to cook, and you cook them evenly that way. So what you do, anyways, put them in a bowl, smudge this stuff all over it. There's enough here to do uh, of this, in this recipe to do, oh maybe six quail or so. Stick those in the refrigerator for at least a couple of hours, uh, and uh, if uh, you know if you can, you can even leave it overnight if you want to. Okay, so that's the marinade for the quail. The vinaigrette, I've already prepared the vinaigrette here. This is what it looks like. But what it includes is some yogurt, again, some sherry wine vinegar, which we have here, some grapefruit juice or orange juice, chopped shallots. We're reflecting some of the same flavors here. Uh, some chopped mint, a little bit of oil. You just whisk that together. And this is a good thing, a little salt and pepper in there, too. This is a good thing also to do, you know, an hour or two ahead of time so that the... Uh, uh, flavors have a chance to marry. Okay, when we cook these guys then, what we do is we take the little quails, these cute little guys, out of the marinade, scrape off most of the stuff that's here because it has a tendency to burn on the grill, and then we just plop it on the grill. You can see I have some of these uh, already going here. Let me turn up the heat on that a little bit, uh, like so. Put them on there. Quail cook very quickly. The idea of these are that uh, you don't want to cook them, you know, to the point where they're, uh, you know, totally dried out. Like most game birds, which is one of the interesting things, again, one of the reasons that I wrote this book was to point out that in the case of little birds like this, they have absolutely no fat to them at all. So what you want to do is to be careful not to overcook them because they just sort of dry out. All right, to finish our dish then, what we're going to do is I have uh, some greens here, some mosh, which is real pretty. What I would do to do this, I would arrange this all ahead of time, is to take some grapefruit segments, some orange segments. We even have a little bit of blood orange here. And arrange it beautifully on the plate like so. Okay? Take one of our little quail off the, uh, off the uh, burner here. And I'm just going to pull this wire right out. Yikes. Arrange that on top of our greens. And this is how you'd serve it, is have the salad ready to go then serve this, have this ready to go so that you can serve the quail warm. Then take some of our yogurt uh, vinaigrette and just drizzle some of this around the greens and uh, maybe over the top of the, of the citrus like so. And there's our warm quail salad with the uh, yogurt citrus vinaigrette. It's really delicious, really lovely, uh, simple to do. All you have to do is to get the quail first, so go out and ask for them. Okay, stay tuned. We've got a quail dish with some old world flavors to it when we return. You know, just as we left with the last segment, you may have seen me dropping some flower petals on here. And, you know, there are a whole world of edible flowers out there. We have this terrific uh, garden uh, that uh, we take a lot of things out of. And, yes, you can eat many flowers, but I just want to give you a quick caution about it. Number one, don't eat flowers if you don't know where they come from, because most flowers are grown with pesticides and things like that, and we don't want to eat those. So oh, you should only have edible flowers that come from in quotes, approved sources. And also know what you're eating. Uh, there are some flowers, things like delphiniums and other things, which are actually poisonous. There's some good books on the subject of edible flowers, so don't go out and start eating flowers or using them as garnish until you've checked a good resource. We'll do a show about edible flowers uh, at some point, and I'll tell you more about that, and also the ways in which you can use them. But don't just go out and take stuff, especially from a... Uh, uh, you know, a, a nursery or a florist and begin throwing them on the plate because often those have been, um, you know, treated with things that we don't want to eat. But they are, once you get edible flowers, the way you can really be sure about them is grow them yourself. They are beautiful to use. Okay, our next dish, what we're going to do is a broiled quail, little quail, which we have here. And we're going to do this with some wild rice pancakes and a, and a little mustard butter 
uh, just uh, put over the top of it just at the last moment. And I just want to sort of throw these together for you very quickly. I'm going to show you how they work. I've sauteed some red onions here just in a little bit of oil just until they're softened. And to this, we're going to add some cooked wild rice. You know, one of the secrets for cooking wild rice, which I found, which someone finally taught me about, and some chopped fresh oregano, you can use dried, is to soak the wild rice much as you do beans for a few hours before you cook it. And what that does is significantly cuts down on the amount of time it takes to, uh, to cook wild rice. Into this, we're going to add an egg yolk or two, and you could leave this out if you want to. I have some chopped walnuts that I'm going to put in here. And finally, I'm going to sprinkle over it a little bit of flour. And of course, we're going to add to this a bit of salt and pepper, which I want to dump in here right now. These are for our basic kind of pancake mixture. And this is going to be a little different than most that uh, maybe you've seen. Uh, uh, to it, well, there's one other ingredient we're going to do, roasted garlic. You know, I talk a lot about this being one of the staples of my kitchen. But what we do is roast it till it's very soft, and we're going to squeeze some of that out and put it in there too. Roasted garlic has a whole different, uh, and I'm going to mush it up here a little bit so that it has a chance to get incorporated. Roasted garlic is one of those things that I just keep around all the time to add to, uh, to dishes, savory dishes. And the reason for that is um, I find that they are, um, it, it, what happens when you roast it is that it becomes sweet and and loses that strong flavor with it. And the final thing I've done with our two eggs, I separated those eggs and beat the egg yolks or egg whites until they're uh, stiff but not dry. And I'm just going to sort of fold all of that together here like so. And to this, add a little bit of stock. I have some rich chicken stock here. You could use whatever you wanted to just to give it a little bit of, of liquid. And the idea is that the, it looks a little gluppy here, but the idea of this is to just add enough of that so it comes together. The egg whites, don't stir it too much so that you deflate the egg whites. We take this by spoonfuls, drop it in a pan with a little bit of oil in it, cook our pancakes, and this is what they look like when they come out. So there's uh, our, our uh, pancakes. I've already prepared those ahead of time. For our quail, what we're going to do with that is uh, put together a little, uh, this is our mustard sort of honey, both marinade, and then we're going to use the marinade to finish the sauce with. I'm going to put in some good Dijon mustard here. I have a little bit of honey. This is going to be a kind of sweet, uh, sweet tart one. Let's get this out of here. You know, one of the things about honey, if it's like this, when it's real kind of chilled, it's a little cold in here today, uh, so it gets sort of stiff, is to... Uh, you know, you can stick this in the microwave for a second, and that comes out. Some more of our, and again, we're sort of reflecting some of the flavors that are in our wild rice pancakes, some chopped oregano, either fresh or dry. I'm adding to this some melted butter. And finally, a squeeze or two of lemon juice, like so. And let me get this here. You know, one of the ways to make sure you catch the seeds is to just squeeze it through your fingers like so. And that way you catch the seeds so that you don't have to dig them out separately there. And uh, again, a little bit of salt and pepper. Let me turn this guy off, which we want to put in here. We want to whisk this together. And uh, that's the marinade for our quail. And what we do with this then is take our quail. We have this sort of gloppy marinade. You can either take the bone ones. These were the ones we used on the grill. Or you can take whole quail. Uh, like the guys that we have over there, which I think are really pretty, too, to do this way. If you're going to broil them, though, it's better to do the boned ones that are a little flatter. That way they cook uh, more evenly. We'll tuck its little wings behind. What you do with it is put it down in the marinade, then stick this in the refrigerator for at least four hours or overnight. And then what we do with that is take it out of the marinade, take off some of the, the excess of this as we sort of slush it around here, and what I do with this is to put just a drop or two of oil in a pan, just so these don't stick. And because this is cool, I can push this around like so. I put these in the pan, and what we do then, a little messy, but hey, that's what cooking's about. It's a very tactile sport, you know? Get your fingers all over things. What we're going to do is take this over to the oven. Let me get my clean-sided towel out here. And put these, start the broiler, put it under a hot broiler. And we have some that are already in here that I want to take out. 
Actually, this is under the broiler, and they're getting very brown here. We'll stick this guy in. And I just want to show you quickly what these look like. This is what they look like. They're beautifully browned. The aroma from them is just, uh, is just really extraordinary. What we're going to do with these, or we're going to take this out, we're going to pour off all that uh, extra fat from the pan, and then we're going to use our leftover marinade to make a wonderful little sauce. And we're going to scrape up all this brown stuff and put it on top of our little wild rice pancakes and serve it immediately. So come right back. We'll finish off that dish. And then we're going to do one more quail dish today, which incorporates both Chinese and American flavors in the same dish. So stay tuned. Remember that we broiled our little quail, and what I've done here is to take, we've taken the juices from the pan that we uh, broiled the quail in, taken the leftover marinade, and what we do with that is just to reduce it down, uh, I put a good splash of white wine in there, and reduce it down to this kind of saucy consistency, and remember we have our wild rice pancakes there, and what I like to do with this is rather than putting it over the top of those beautiful quail, is just to sort of drizzle this around like so uh, on our wild rice pancake. And we have some pretty roasted, for any of you who've watched this show, you know what a freak I am about uh, wild mushrooms of all kinds. And so we have some wild mushrooms that we've quickly broiled also. And there it is. There's our uh, quail, our broiled quail with the wild rice pancakes and the honey mustard sauce. All right, we're going to do one more little quail today. And this is one in which uh, we're going to use the whole quail. And with these guys, what you can do to, and you don't have to do this, but I think it just makes them look a little better, is tuck their little wings behind. Let me get this so you can see it. Tuck their little wings behind, and then you can take the legs and just tuck it right in the cavity of the quail if you want to. And what that does is it forms a little more compact package. Or you can leave them like this. And what we want to do now with this is the ingredients for this, I mentioned that this is a uh, Chinese meets, uh, meets the West kind of uh, combination. We're going to start with some soy sauce, which I'm going to dump in the bowl here. Some five spice powder, which is here, which you can get at any, most supermarkets now carry it. Some red wine vinegar, some garlic. Uh, we are going to add to this, and this is something you get at any Asian market. Uh, this is uh, garlic chili paste. Um, which is pretty spicy, it's garlicky, it's really kind of wonderful. It's one of those condiments, that Chinese condiments, that I keep in my kitchen all the time because it's delicious added to things like this or to barbecue sauce or whatever it is. And finally, and this is a Western ingredient, of course, is some maple syrup, which has its own special flavors to it. So we whoosh that around like so. Take our little quails either in a bundle here or in a long way. Put them in uh, the, uh, the glaze. Uh, let them marinate in there for three or four hours, again, refrigerated, if you want to. Also, this is, if you think you're not going to do this with quail, this is a terrific um, marinade to do with things like chicken breast. Uh, I love this with pork tenderloin. And you would do it exactly the same way. Anyway, mush it all around there like so. We put it in a pan. And then what I do with that, and we already have some going here in the in the oven that I want to show you is we quickly uh, roast these at, at relatively high temperature, about 375 or so, until we actually start it at um, about 450 degrees, let, let, it, let that cook for about four or five minutes, and then turn it down uh, and let it cook for another oh, eight to 10 minutes until they get uh, this really kind of lacquered look uh, to them. And they get crispy. The ends get crispy and all that stuff. Uh, total cooking time for these is about uh, oh, 10 to 12 minutes or so. And all we do with these, how I would present them, often we'll just have these as part of a picnic. We'll roast them like this, take them with us, and just eat them at room temperature. But you could also, if you wanted to, if you were serving this at home, just do something very simple like put it on a 
little, and there are wonderful juices inside of here. Put it on a little bed of uh, fragrant rice like basmati or something like that. And we have some fried greens around here, some fried kale and uh, arugula. It's really delicious. And if you wanted to, you could even take a little bit of the leftover marinade, be sure to warm it up, uh, add a little chicken stock to clean it, and just drizzle some of that over it. Anyway, hope that gives you some ideas about quail. That's today's show. Hope you enjoyed it. You can receive uh, today's recipes by writing to the following address, or you can stop by our website. It's that simple. Thanks for watching, and please join me again for more healthy-style cooking on Cooking Right. And ask for quail, darn it.